اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آیت نمبر 20 سورہ التوبہ الذین آمنوا وحاجروا وجاہدوا فی سبیل اللہ بی اموالہم و انفسہم آزم درجتا عند اللہ و اولائکہ هم الفائزون So you see how Allah says it Believe for those who have believed that is they have embraced Islam They leave their homes that is they have migrated and make jihad with their wealth and persons in the cause of Allah. Have higher ranks in the sight of Allah, it is they who will be truly successful. Their Rabb gives them good news of His mercy, His good pleasure and paradise with everlasting bliss. They will live therein forever. Surely it is Allah with whom is the mighty reward. May Allah give us the ability to, to promote His religion by the best of abilities that he has granted us. O believers, do not take your fathers and your brothers as your friends if they prefer kufr. That is, if they are on unbelief or they believe in the, if they are on the side of kufr, then Allah says, do not take them as your friends. Now this Allah is talking about the fathers and the brothers who can be more closer to us than these relations over Iman. That means Iman becomes your priority. To save my Iman, I will have to even choose my relations. For those who turn away from this commandment shall be considered wrongdoers. And as we know in the history of the Muslim Sahabas, there were so many people, so many Sahabas that in the same family, the son has converted to Islam, but the mother is a mushrik. The father has reverted to Islam but the children are still not on Islam. So there were a lot of differences within the family. O Prophet, tell them if your fathers, your sons, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ أَبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُكْ تَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَقْشَوْنَا كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُوا تَرْدَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَجِحَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ O Prophet, tell them, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your relatives, the wealth that you have acquired, the business in which you fear a loss, and the homes with which you, that are dearer to you than Allah, His Rasul, and making jihad in His way, then wait until Allah brings about His decision. Allah does not guide the transgressors. These are clear indications from Allah that all this is going to be left behind and then you are going to come alone to Allah. So what is your priority? Is priority to make money? Is priority to save your business from failing? Is your priority only to maintain relations? What is your priority? Allah has given us a criteria that if your family is towards kufr, then don't make friends with them. Don't give priority to friendship over Iman. And similarly, if you have, uh, now these were the, uh, this of course as per history, this is referring to the time when uh, the Muslims set out for battle of Tabuk. And this was a time when it was, it was very hot. This was the time when the harvests were ready to be um, taken. And of course, this was the time when people would have made money. And of course, heat, as we all know, those areas were so tense in heat and of course, the scarcity of water. And then uh, long journeys. And then of course, it's a war. And then you have to fight an army. So there were so many things in consideration. But at this time, Allah made it obligatory on all, all the people that they had to go. They had to go for it. And if they are fearing about their businesses, about their lives, about their homes, about their families, then Allah said that you need to remember that Allah does not guide the transgressors. Allah has indeed helped you in many battlefields. Recently that was on the day of Hunan. Now Hunan was again fought after, the, uh, after Fatah Makkah. When you were proud of your great numbers, and great numbers were that, this was the first time that the Muslims left, they were about 12,000 in number, and the tribe of Hawazin who was facing the Muslims was about, were about 4,000 in number. And we see that these, this tribe of Hawazin was uh, 
in ambush they were in ambush for the muslims and they took over then they, they started uh, um, spraying the arrows suddenly on the muslims and of course because of this the muslims got very confused and they shattered and they were scattered all over and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam remained steadfast till the end and then when allah taala gave them uh, sakina that is when he took over and the muslims were finally um, uh, winners of this battle so these little these these few ayats are now going to refer to the battle of hunain and allah says that you were more in number and your opponents were less in number and you thought that you will easily take over them but the numbers availed you nothing why because they were taken by surprise because they were already waiting in ambush for the muslims the earth will, with all its vastness seem so close upon you and you turned your backs and fled because then the muslims got so confused that they started scattering all over and a lot of them even left prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a few of course when a hundreds that remained with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but allah sent down his sakina that was peace and tranquility upon his rasul and the believers and sent down to your aid those forces which you could not see that is again allah helped them through the angels and punished the unbelievers thus for the recompense for the unbeliever then after that you also witnessed that allah guided to repent some of them whom he wanted for allah is forgiving merciful this was the month of shawwal 8th hijri when ghazwa hunain was fought believers know that mushrikeen are unclean therefore do not let them come near the masjid al haram after this year's pilgrimage so by the 10th year when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went for hajj then there was no pagan in during the hajj and what is allah referring to that the mushrikeen well ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu innamal mushrikuna najas so keeping in mind that their belief is najas what they believe and they believe in idols so this concept is najas and because of this allah said that they cannot then come into masjid al haram why because masjid al haram is based on tauhid it proves oneness of allah and the submission to oneness of allah so therefore shirk cannot then enter so that is najas if you fear poverty soon allah if he so wills enrich you out of his bounty that means if you will lose in your trade and likewise allah is going to provide you allah is all knowledgeable all wise fight those people of the book now referring to the jews and christians who do not believe in allah in the last day do not refrain from what has been prohibited by allah and his rasul and do not embrace the religion of truth until the pay jizya so what has been now prescribed for the people of the book that if they want the security from the muslim authorities and leadership then they will have to pay jizya this was of course kind of a protection tax with their own hands and feel themselves subdued that means they'll have to live in subjugation under the muslims protection the jews say now why is that so is because the jews say uzair is the son of allah and the christians say that messiah that is christ is the son of allah that is what they say with their mouths imitating the sayings of the former unbelievers may allah destroy them how perverted are they ittakhazu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbabam min dunillahi wal masih ibn maryam the jews and christians have taken their rabbis and priests to be their lords beside allah and so they did with messiah that is jesus the son of maryam and if you remember adi bin hatim who later on reverted to islam and he became a muslim from the bani israel and when he heard this he came to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said how is it that our ahbar and rabbani are be taking them as lords so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him is it not that when they used to say something halal or something haram to you and then you used to accept it so yes they said yes this is what we used to do so nabi sasam said that this is what you are calling them as lord against allah why because haram and halal has to be declared by allah himself and with the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam but if your ahbar scholars or imams are going to guide you for halal and haram which is not said by their book then that is declaring them as lords so although they were commanded in the torah and gospel to worship none but one ilah besides whom there is none worthy of worship subhanahu amma yushrikun exalted be he above those whom they associate with him they desire to extinguish the light of allah with their mouths but allah will not allow it to happen that means even if they are going to go out and confuse people from coming towards islam allah is not going to let it work for them 
for he seeks to perfect his light even though the disbelievers may dislike it it is he who has sent his rasul with guidance and true deen to make it prevail over all other deens even though the mushrikeen may hate it o believers indeed most of the jewish rabbis and the christian priests misappropriate the wealth of people and hinder them from the way of allah to those who hold gold and silver and do not spend it in the way of allah proclaim a painful punishment The day will surely come when their treasure will be heated up in the fire of hell and their foreheads sides and backs branded with it they will be told this is the treasure which you hoarded now taste what you were hoarding now from here we will see that a new topic allah is going to mention about the 12 months that we are using in the lunar calendar and these months have been set to us by allah himself ان عده الشهور عند الله 12 شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والارض منها اربعه حرم the number of months ordained by allah is 12 in the book of allah since the day he created the heavens and the earth that means the 12 months that we have whether in the gregorian calendar or the lunar calendar these months have been the especially the lunar calendar has been set by allah of course the names in the gregorian calendar have been later mentioned by people but the lunar has been set by allah and out of which allah says four are sacred that zikada zilhaj muharram and rajab that is the established principle of deen therefore do not wrong yourselves by violating them that means the arabs were not allowed to fight in these four sacred months but you may fight against the mushrikeen in all these months if they fight against you in all of them that means these are sacred months but if the mushrikeen do not resist then you can also go ahead and fight them know that allah is with the righteous transposing a prohibited month is only an addition to unbelief thereby the disbelievers are misguided they make a certain month lawful one year and in another year they make the same a forbidden month that means they had made made a mockery out of these sacred months so that they make up for the months which allah has sanctified thus making lawful what allah has forbidden their evil actions seem pleasing to them allah does not guide the disbelieving people they say that a man from bani kanana would attend the hajj season every year he would say i am never rejected refuted denied we made this coming that is muharram sacred and suffer not following years he would come and then he would change these months so this is like making a mockery out of the uh, prescribed fact that allah had declared these months uh, sacred and this of course was a practice practice which was later on continued even after the coming of islam o believers ya ayuhal ladina amanu ma lakum iza qila lakum unfiru fi sabilillah fi sabilillah thaqaltum ila al ard o believers what is the matter with you that when you are asked to march forth in the way of allah you cling to earth now this is also referring to ghazwa tabuk when they had the muslims had to go and fight the romans and Do you prefer the life of this world to the life of the hereafter if it is so then allah says you should know that the comforts of this life are little as compared to the life of the hereafter if you do not march forth he will inflict on you a painful punishment and replace you with other people and you cannot harm him at, at all so now this order came in for all the muslims whether young or old they all had to participate in the ghazwa tabu for allah has power over everything illa tansuruhu faqad nasarullahu iza akhrajahu allazina kafaru saniyas nayni iz huma fil ghari iz yaqul li sahibihi la tahzan inna allaha ma'ana because you see now allah is going to refer to the time when hazrat abu bakar was with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were migrating that even at this time of tabuk if you are not going to help your rasul then keep this incidents in mind and what was this if you do not help the prophet it does not matter allah did help him when the unbelievers drove him out of his town the second of the two while the two were in the cave and when the enemy got so close to the cave he said to his companion who is this referring to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to hazrat abu bakar radhiyallahu anhu do not worry allah is with us so allah sent down his serenity on him and strengthened him with forces which you cannot see So if you are going to come out and fight in the way of Allah that is going to be honorable for you and Allah is going to put you in the highest ranks but Allah says if you think you can't come out and do that then don't worry Allah had helped Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam even when he was alone with Abu Bakr he is going to help him even now but this is for your own good 
He made the word of the unbelievers lowest while words of Allah remain supreme. Allah is almighty, all wise. March forth wherever you are equipped lightly or heavily and make jihad in the way of Allah with your wealth and your persons. That is best for you if you understand. As for hypocrites, if the gain would have been immediate and the journey short, they would have certainly accompanied because the book was of course a very long way to go. But the long journey and of course and we all know that this is a uh, this is the first time that this was outside Hijaz that the Muslims had to go out and fight against the Romans. And uh, this was a general a call for all the Muslims to come out. But the long journey that was in the Tabuk expedition was too hard for them. Now to justify that they were not accompanying Abu Salam, they would even swear by Allah. If we were able, we would certainly have marched with you. Now who is coming and making these excuses to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu These are the hypocrites. By doing so, they are destroying their own souls. For Allah knows that they are liars because they could have gone in this battle, but they avoided. Allah forgives you. Why did you, O Muhammad, give them leave to stay behind? You yourself should not have given them leave so that it would have become clear which of them spoke the truth and which of them invited false excuses. Nabi Sallallahu was so soft at heart that whoever used to come and make an excuse that he needs to stay back and Nabi Sallallahu used to grant him leave. At this given point when Ghazwai Tabuk was so important against the Romans and every Muslim was required to come out and fight, Nabi Sallallahu still gave them excuse. He excused them and gave them leave. And at this point Allah is saying, why did you let the hypocrites go? Those who believe in Allah and the last day will never ask you for exemption from fighting with their wealth and their person because a true believer knows that the words of Allah are true. Allah is all aware of those who are righteous. Only those people are for exemption who do not believe in Allah in the last day and whose hearts are filled with doubt and are wavering because of their doubts. Because doubt is one of the signs that hypocrites go through. They are always doubting what is being said. If they had intended to march forth, they would certainly have made some preparation for it. And what was their preparation? That they would have asked for this tawfiq that, Oh Allah, let me be with, with them. But Allah did not like their going forth. So he made them lag behind and they were told, Stay behind with those who stay behind. Had they gone with you, they would have added nothing but mischief. And they would have made efforts to create disorder among your ranks. And there would have been some among you who would have listened to them. Allah knows the wrongdoers. That means when the hypocrites came and they started giving excuses to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Allah never wanted them to go. Allah did not want them to have the tawfiq of gaining this honor and the highest ranks. So Allah Ta'ala put it in such a way that they started coming and giving excuses that, oh, we are so worried about our children and our family and our home and our businesses. We can't go. We'll join you next time. And all such excuses were coming from them. Allah says, because Allah didn't want them to. And Allah said, even if they had gone with you, what would they have done? They would have still created mischief and confusions amongst the weaker Muslims. Just like they had been doing in Badr and, and the way they did in Ahad. Indeed, they had plotted sedition before and created disturbance to make you unsuccessful until the truth came through and the decree of Allah prevailed, even though they disliked it. Among them, there is someone. This is referring to Jud bin Qais. He said, grant me exemption and do not expose me to temptation because he felt that the Roman women were very beautiful. So he said, don't put me in any kind of fitna by taking me. So I would rather be left behind. Have they not fallen into temptation of telling lies, double dealings and hypocrisy? And Allah says they are already under a trial. Why are they thinking that they will be put in a trial only if they go to this battle? Sometimes we are also trying to make excuses from the way of Allah. And thinking that staying behind means we are safer. Not realizing to the point that when we are staying behind, trial may still come over here. Even in our homes, the trials will come. Not necessarily when you're going out to help the deen that the trials will come, but the trials will even come even if you're not helping deen. So Allah says, do they not think that they are already in a trial? Why? Because of showing their hypocrisy by telling lies. They are already tested and they are already been noted. So already surely hell has encircled these disbelievers. If you gain success, it grieves them. But if you face a setback, they say we had taken our precautionary measures. Because if you go on the battle and if you lose your life or if you lose the war or similar things happen to you, then they will say, see, we made a good decision. Our, our decisions were, were better than yours not to go in the first place. 
so allah says so if you would have won they would not have liked it but if you in case had lost it then they would have a reason to say that they made better decisions and they would have turned away rejoicing so oh prophet tell them nothing will happen to us except what allah has written for us he is our protector and in allah let the believers put their trust further tell them can you expect from us can you expect for us anything other than two excellent things either it's going to be victory or it is going to be shahada but we are waiting for allah to afflict you with punishment either from himself or by our hands so wait if you will we too are waiting say whether you give willingly or with reluctance it will not be accepted from you for you are the people who are transgressors the reasons which prevent their contributions from being accepted are that they disbelieve in allah and his rasul that they come to offer salah but reluctantly so please note the point here allah says that wala ya'tuna salata illa wa hum kusala wala yunfiquna illa wa hum karihun and that they offer contributions but unwillingly so these are again now two more points that are coming in as signs uh for the hypocrites one is that whenever they get up for namaz they come very reluctantly that means they are not happy to say this amal it's just like you want to uh brush off this burden from your shoulders that quickly come and say namaz now you don't even check whether you're wearing the right clothes have you checked your uh, place of salah you will just come say and one is gone thinking that it was a burden and i've put the burden off so you're not happy to come and meet allah and secondly it's allah says that when it times when a time comes for them to contribute whether it is for uh, human welfare or whether it is for hukukullah whether it is for the promotion of deen then they are again one unwilling if if a matter of their own choice will come forward they are ready to spend so even for us there is a lesson here that whenever somebody comes and there is a need someone is in need and then there is my need can i balance it out what is my priority do i give priority that i have done my part i have fulfilled my necessities i have enough for me to take care of me and my family and now i have something in excess and there are two things one is i can give in the way of allah and other is i go for my fellow beings welfare so when such moments come when i have to take out my income am i happy to do that or do i find myself stingy so allah has referred this as a sign of hypocrisy so may allah save us from that and may allah give us the tawfiq that whenever such a opportunity to give comes in his way whether for the people or whether for the promotion of deen may allah give us the ability to do so fala tu jibka amwaluhum wala auladuhum inma yuridu allah liyuzibahu biha fil hayat ad dunya wa tazhaka anfusuhum wa hum kafirun let neither their wealth nor their children dazzle you in reality allah intends to punish them with these things in life and that their souls may depart while they are still unbelievers and what do we refer to here is that the wealth and the children allah takes away the baraka from them and for the purpose that we should have had them and then if the wealth has no baraka in it there's no barakat in the wealth then no matter how much you earn you will still find yourself asking and you will still find yourself short of funds and if it and if the children what what are they required for that they should become a sadqa jariya for us that they should remain steadfast in their teachings of islam but if it is not so then allah says then in such way don't get impressed by them it may be that there, that that there's no barakat in this in in this offspring and instead they they ruin the good deeds of their parents so allah says that allah is going to punish them with these things in this life that they may never become the uh, source of peace for their eyes and their heart and for us our children at times are so important for for anything around us our children are the most important thing and if they don't become a source of our um peace and our love and our happiness for the eyes and for the heart then it is only tension and grievances and sorrows for such parents so allah says that this is a sign for them so may allah save us from that they swear by allah that they are indeed believers like you yet they are not of you in fact they are afraid to appear they are afraid to appear to you in their true colors we are going to take a short break here 